Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4BMG. Today on HOA Ham, pairing the IC705 with the Zygu XPA125B amplifier tuner with a non-resonant antenna, focusing on how to use that tuner. In the coming months, I'll have a few extra videos using that XPA125B that I think will be of interest to you that weren't part of the original plan. Today's video kind of culminates what I was trying to do. Pair that XPA125B amplifier tuner with the X5105, the G90, and eventually getting up to the IC705, which is why I bought that amplifier tuner. For those of you who watched the first video pairing the IC705 to the XPA125B, there will be some redundant information. I've actually copied in the section where I connected the two with cabling. I'll put that in the description, or if I can figure out YouTube chapters, I'll put that in there so you can bypass that area. As far as screen feedback on the XPA125B, as well as settings between the two units, I've added some additional information because of using this with a non-resonant antenna and firing up that tuner. Let's get to it. I've covered use case at great length, why we would pair a QRP rig with an external amplifier. If you're watching this video, it's likely you already have interest and have a use case. If you don't, you can watch the second half of this video where I will give plenty of information about use case. As far as cabling, I also described in the last video why I pair my IC705 with a relay buffer interface to protect my radio. Some will say it's unnecessary. I will say my IC705 is too valuable for it to be unnecessary. Now on to the connections between the two units from the last video. Let's get this all connected. This is the relay buffer interface from Radio Dan, and let's start with connecting it. First, the connection between the relay buffer and the IC705. Other cable goes into your ALC keying jack of the IC705. Make sure it is firmly seated. Next connection will be between the relay buffer and the six pin DIN connector on the back of the XPA125B. And if you've worked with these before, you know that they have three little dimples on them that you have to line up with your input on whatever you're plugging into. And once you line them up, it slides in rather easily. Let's move this off to the side so we can get our antenna. Antenna in. Patch cable from the amplifier to the IC705. which of course is on the other side of the radio, not a problem. You all know how to do this part anyway. Here it is all set up nice and neat. Let's go through it one more time to make sure we have it. From the ALC jack on the side of your IC705, we're coming into the relay buffer interface where it says from radio. We're going out to the amplifier where it says to amplifier. We're taking this cable going into the six pin DIN connector in the back of the XPA125B. The relay buffer interface itself has a power cable that plugs into my power pole distribution box. Next, we're going to connect our antenna in and our antenna from our transceiver. And then this patch cable goes into the other side, obviously, of the IC705. So this is RF coming in and RF going out. Obviously our power connector for the amplifier. Let's get this turned around, the camera resituated so we can see the front of our equipment and go over our settings. What are the correct settings in the transceiver and the amplifier tuner to initiate a manual tune? 
If you read the Zhaigu manual, it will say for all non Zhaigu equipment, you should drive a CW carrier into the tuner at one watt. I have found that not to work with the IC705. Now, I am changing some menu settings so that I can use my microphone to send a CW carrier, and maybe that's why it didn't work for me. I don't have a keyer, so I couldn't use a keyer. I'm driving this with RIDI. So I basically go into RIDI and I drive RIDI at five watts into the tuner and it initiates a manual tune cycle. There are three settings we need to pay attention to on the amplifier tuner. We're driving our band selection manually and we need to match that to our transceiver. And that is accomplished simply by pressing the band button in manual mode until you arrive at the correct band selection. Obviously you want to make sure that your automatic antenna tuner is in the on position even for a manual tune. And let's say something about this quote automatic antenna tuner. This is not like my LDG2 Pro, which while I'm speaking on single sideband will actually go into an automatic tune cycle if it reaches the threshold of an SWR. That's not what we mean here with the Zhaigu XBA 125B. What we mean by an automatic tune cycle is you manually put your radio into CW, or in our case, RIDI. You drive five watts into the amplifier tuner, and if the SWR threshold is above three, it will automatically tune. Otherwise, you have to drive a manual tune. So essentially, it's a manual tuner. You're always going into CW, and you're always initiating a tune cycle. If your SWR is greater than three to one, when you key it up, when you push ready, when you drive the CW signal, it will quote automatically tune. It's not what you think of when you hear the words automatic antenna tuner as in a LDG Pro 2. The second setting is you wanna make sure that your antenna tuner is in the on position. To initiate a manual tune, it needs to be in the on position. And then my very strong recommendation regarding the power amplifier is that you put it in bypass so that it says off. And that way when you initiate the manual tune, you're driving five watts, one watt, whatever you've chosen as the output of your transceiver. All right, on to the next step. Let's talk about screen feedback. And again, this is going to be very similar to the prior video with one exception. So we have volts, amps, and temperature. Our volts are going to be in the typical range that we expect for ham radio operators. Our amps are going to be one to two idle and then maybe up to 12, 13, 14, 15 during transmission and single sideband. Temperature is around 28 to 30 Celsius and I have never seen it escalate much higher than that regardless of how much I was using this in single sideband. In the upper right hand corner is the antenna SWR and in the upper left hand corner is the transceiver SWR. The bottom left hand corner would be the watts into the amplifier from your radio between one to five is typically what you're driving the amplifier and tuner with and then bottom right would be watts out to your antenna. Let's go through the process of manually tuning up the XPA 125B. We're going to do this on six meters, 20 and 40 as representative of what you would do on all bands. Before I tune up on any specific frequency, off camera I will confirm that nobody is on that frequency so we don't interrupt QSOs and cut that out just to save time in the video. If you're following the Zhaigu manual, it recommends that you drive a tune cycle in CW with one watt. I found on a pretty consistent basis, I can't make the IC705 drive the tuner with one watt of CW. So I've been using RIDI up to five watts. I'm gonna recommend that you take your power amplifier in bypass mode before you execute a tune cycle. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your band selection on the tuner amplifier matches the band of your transceiver. Before we drive a tune cycle, let's see if we can get a SWR reading on this frequency. 4.6, 4.7, 4.8 to 1. All right, let's tune it. Now let's go into single sideband and see what our SWR looks like. Pay attention to your SWR in your top left corner because that's telling you what's going into the transceiver and of course in our IC705 we can see on our meter. 
is this frequency in use, KD4 BMG. Let's take some power into it. Is this frequency in use, KD4 BMG. So there you could see our SWR on the amplifier tuner it was showing one watt, as well as our SWR on the IC705 was showing flat. Let's head up to 20 meters for the next tune cycle. We are in ready. Make sure you take your power amplifier in bypass mode. Let's get our band selection to match our transceiver. Before we tune up, let's see what the SWR looks like. About 1.9 to 1. Now let's go into a tune cycle. All right, looks like we're about 1.3 to 1. Is this frequency in use, KD4 BMG? Let's put some power into it. Is this frequency in use? Is this frequency in use, KD4 BMG? And when we get some power driving into it, you can see that the SWR is flat at um, 1 to 1 on both the transceiver and on the amplifier tuner. Let's head up to 40 meters for the next example. Put our power amplifier in bypass mode and let's match our band selection. Let's see what our SWR looks like. About a 1, 4, 1, 5 to 1. Let's go into a tune cycle. And now we're at one to one. Let's put some power through it. Is this frequency in use? Is this frequency in use? KD4 BMG. So you can see once we actually get the watts behind this with the power amplifier on, it gets us to one to one. Is this frequency in use? Is this frequency in use? KD4 BMG. Let's talk about lessons learned. I've been using this amplifier tuner for about three months now, and I think I finally have it figured out. When it comes to driving a tune cycle on the X5105 and the G90, CW worked great. When I'm trying to drive a tune cycle with the IC705, I was forced to use RIDI, and I was driving it at about 5 watts. I have confirmed that the tuner has memory. It's nowhere advertised in the publications from Jaigu, nor is it in the instruction manual. I reached out to my primary Jaigu distributor and asked them, this thing acts like it has memory. I go back and I try to tune in an area of a band that I had been previously and I can't get it to initiate a tune. Does it have memory? And the response came back from Jaigu, yes it does. It has one memory per band. So that single memory location has something to do with the functionality that Jaigu has programmed into this amplifier tuner. You could use this to your advantage by strategically choosing the frequency in the band that you first tune up on. And that way you have some bandwidth around that frequency that you would not have to tune up again in the future. Get too far away from that and you'll require another tune if your antenna has that high of an SWR. Another thing learned is that different bands require different watts out of your transceiver to get you up to 100 watts on the amplifier. So you'll have to play with that. I would start with one and slowly work your way up to five. But again, Jaigu highly, strongly recommends don't exceed that 100 watt rating of the amplifier. And after spending almost three months with the XPA125B amplifier tuner, here's something I wanna pass on to you. It will save you some grief. Do yourself a favor and be careful how much attention you pay to the SWR reading in the top right hand corner of the screen. It's an SWR reading of your antenna. It's not the SWR that your transceiver is seeing. And I'm not used to seeing that type of feedback information. After a tune cycle or actually during a single sideband transmission, if my eyes migrated to the top right hand corner of that feedback screen, I would get confused because it would be giving me feedback of the SWR at my antenna and it was either as high as before tune or just a little bit lower, but not matched like I would expect after a tune. Pay attention to the top left-hand corner and your SWR meter on your transceiver. That's giving you the true reading of what your radio is seeing. 
Now for a QSO map and two brief QSOs where you can watch the feedback information on the screen and you can watch the SWR in and out, the watts in and out, and get a feel for this amplifier tuner. QRZ, Papa Victor 8 Alpha Lima QRZ. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf, 580 Boa Vista Brasil. Good afternoon, my friend. Good afternoon, hi Leo, it's Bob here in Tampa, Florida. You are 5-9, over. You are sad, and many thanks for 5-9 in Tampa, Florida. You are 5 eight in Brazil. How do you do, my brother? Are you okay this afternoon? Doing well, doing well. Wishing you a happy new year, friend. And I thank my brother. Happy new year to you. Five and nine and now because I move my antenna system in your direction. QSL? QSL, QSL. What a great pile up. I hope you're having fun, friend. 73. 73. Happy new year. Be safe. Be well. Have a nice time in Tampa. 73. Q was that? Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Okay. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Thank you. You're 5 by 5. 5 5. The uh, name is Ramon, Radio Alpha Mike, Oscar November in Caracas, Venezuela. Go ahead. QSL the 5 5 Ramon, and you are 5 5 in Tampa, Florida. QSL Bob, thank you for the contact. 73. 73, friend. Hi, Yankee Dexter 5, Echo Echo Delta, QRZ. What needs improved with this pairing? It's the same thing I have said all along about the XPA 125B. I have one complaint and only one, and that is the manual. The instructions, they're just insufficient. They're good enough for using this with the G90 and the X5105 because they were made to pair together. It's, it's foolproof, you can't screw it up. But when we start hooking up our IC705, which is three times the cost of the XPA 125B, it sure would be nice to have some more information from the manufacturer of that amplifier tuner to make sure we're doing things right. A few of us are figuring out all of these details by trial and error and posting them for you on YouTube, but gosh, I really don't like using my IC705 as a test dummy. I feel Jaigu is a great marketing opportunity if they would choose to provide more specific details and document them on how to pair the two, cable the two, use the two together. I don't think they would cannibalize their own sales. I've said that in my last video and several videos before. Many of us who own an IC705 own what? An X5105, a G90, and now an X6100. I feel like sales of those units are safe, even if Jaigu gave us better information on pairing the XPA125 to the IC705. What's awesome about this pairing? If you already own the IC705, you get it. If you want to get it, what are you waiting for? It's an awesome rig. It gives you all kinds of options when you have this pairing. And I've talked about that in my use case videos. The feedback that I received in my QSOs is incredibly positive. I got strong signal reports and very good voice quality reports. This is an excellent pairing. You end up with a 100 watt shack and a QRP rig that just works. It does have a learning curve because the instruction manual is a little short on detail and not all the YouTube videos out there have sufficient detail for you to take from and know how to use it. I hope my videos have given you the insight you need to make a decision of whether or not this is a good piece of kit for you. If you think that it is and this is gear you're going to buy, if you use the link below, you can get a $15 discount off the XPA125B over at radiotity.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell so you'll be notified when I make future videos. 73 friend, thanks for watching.